Hope for you, seed for the tree, take a few bites of an apple and you're good to go. Absolutely any fruit fills you up, will improve your quality of life, but just to a point, everything in a person's life is through their backside, to put it bluntly. The doctor was drinking alcohol very heavily off screen. What are you sucking on that nipple for? The doctor needs to go to the doctor. You want to understand more information about life? Live it. I mean, you want to make the world a better place? Start with yourself. Basically, everything's through some kind of red tape. And you either kill the world or make it better. My name is Ina Lomanov. I interview fruitarians from all over the world to learn about their lives, problems, and benefits of this lifestyle. We want to share their unique stories with you on The Juiciest Show. Unique stories on Urban Fruitarian. Hello and welcome to the Urban Fruitarian Show with Inna Lomanov. In our show, we will be featuring the stories of people who are in one way or another connected to fruitarianism, fruitarians or people exclusively eating fruits. Personally, I don't like to use the word diet, although the word diet from Greek means healthy lifestyle, healthy eating. But in English, the word diet sounds like the word die. And so I think that lifestyle is a much better way to describe a fruitarian. Also, we know that diets usually don't work in the long run and also have a negative impact on a person's health. Our guest today is a top trainer, fruitarian, blogger, coach, and I also call him a motivator from God, Artyom Kushnarev. Welcome, Artyom, to the first episode of Urban Fruitarian. Artyom Sergeyevich Kushnarev, 29 years old. He was born in Vladikavkaz and recently lived in the city of Saransk, where his journey of fruitarianism began. Artyom currently resides in Phuket, Thailand. He is a personal trainer, fitness model, lecturer, and master of sports in Greco-Roman wrestling. At the time of the interview, Artyom had been eating only fruit for 827 days and not drinking water for over 700 days. His search for truth led him to fruitarianism. Artyom Kushnarev is an example of how to gain and maintain natural strength and beauty of the body through a 100% fruit-based diet and lifestyle. Artyom works with a large number of clients around the world online to help them gain or lose weight, build muscle, and adopt a healthier lifestyle. Thanks to his support and guidance, more than 2,000 people have already improved their bodies and, most importantly, their health. Artyom's mission today is to bring positivity and creative energy to the world. Favorite fruits? Durian. Tomatoes. Mangoes. And avocados. Artyom, thank you for joining us despite such distances to discuss these tricky and important issues in the fruitarian community that may be of interest to many around the world. Good morning, 12 hours difference between you and me, Phuket and New York. It is almost eight o'clock in the evening here and you have early morning. What have you been up to so far today before you come to record our interview? Yes, friends, good morning, good evening, and generally any time of day, everyone. I've had time to wake up, do my warm up, my traditional exercise. I haven't eaten anything yet. I usually start breakfast closer to lunchtime. So all I've had time to do is my traditional exercises and to come to record this great interview with you. Great. It is Friday the 13th where you are, by the way, but not yet where I am. Some people say it's a bad day. Do you believe in omens? I think it's a form of mental weakness in a way and a person decides for himself which day is successful and which day is unsuccessful. So Friday the 13th or 14th is absolutely irrelevant. Yes, today also, if I remember correctly, in the former Soviet Union, they celebrate old New Year's Day. For Americans in general, or anyone around the world other than the former Soviet Union, 
it's almost impossible to explain what old New Year's Day is. Do you still celebrate any holidays at all? Or with your lifestyle, do you no longer celebrate holidays like you used to when you were a kid? I have a holiday every day now, every day. Because people who eat fruits know that every time it's something new, bright, incredible, fantastic sensations. So no matter how many meals I have in a day, it's like a New Year's table every time. It's like that. I see. And now you're in Phuket and you're probably there now because you had to leave home after the events of February 24th of last year began. Tell me, do you miss your home? How do you feel about not being able to be where you were born and raised right now? There are a lot of factors here really. I have a sister residing in Singapore for work with her spouse. So my plan was to come to Asia anyway get to know the local fruits, let's say, see some relatives. And in fact, I can't say that anything in particular influenced my move. Uh, that is, everything is going according to plan. And on the subject of being bored, honestly, no. Each of my days is scheduled literally within half an hour to an hour. I know what I'm going to do. I make it up myself. I design my day. I plan it. And so there's no time to be bored, frankly. No kidding. The days go by so fast that I don't even have time to count them. I get it. Same here. Okay, let's go back to your childhood. When you were little, do you remember your, well, one of your first interactions with fruit? Any memories specifically of childhood when you were there eating some fruit or picking fruit with your parents or they bought it for you? If you can remember, tell me. Yes, I remember that I was very fond of fruit subconsciously. And I remember when some relatives came to visit us, they could bring apples, oranges. It was very tasty. Didn't quite understand why we didn't eat fruit on a regular basis. I mean, what's the reason? Why does it only appear on the table on holidays and is something unusual? So I've been craving fruit since I was a kid. When I started to grow up and train, I realized how important they are in recovery. And after a workout, I'd often substitute a whole meal instead of just the traditional meal like buckwheat, chicken, etc. I could just eat fruit. I was subconsciously drawn to that. No protein carbohydrate windows I didn't want to fill, even though that's what everyone talked about, that something will happen to you if you don't. Immediately within, I don't know, an hour after the workout, some sort of muscle breakdown would begin. Nothing was really happening. I wanted to eat fruit specifically. It wasn't considered the right thing to do. But as practice has shown, it couldn't be more right. As a child, what was your favorite fruit? Do you remember? Probably apples and oranges because I didn't know much about them. For example, mangoes, I definitely wouldn't have been able to pick on my own back then. I really liked tomatoes. Tomatoes from the vegetable garden, from the garden, from our personal, so to speak, farm. I guess that's it. And plums, of course, various berries raspberries, strawberries, gooseberries. Do you remember what you wanted to be when you were a child? You know, what you plan to become and does it coincide with what you are doing now? I wanted to be a fruitarian. I wanted to tell people about it. Okay. Uh, to be honest with you, what did you want to be? I wanted to be someone who was good for people, guiding them in some way. I mean, it was like when you were a kid, you felt, yeah, that you were going to make a difference to the world. There was definitely a desire to choose some direction. I just didn't understand what it was called yet. Astronaut or something didn't fit under that. All these structures are like, it's too complicated, too narrowly focused. I wanted something more free, something more interesting, creative. And I realized that I could broadcast, motivate people, tell them about health, about a healthy lifestyle, about nutrition. It's the best job in the world. That's it. Atyom, let's be clear. You've been eating only fruit for more than 800 days. In the American Wikipedia, not in the Russian Wikipedia, in the Russian Wikipedia, we corrected it. And hopefully it will stay that way. We tried to correct it in the American Wikipedia. We failed. But in the American Wikipedia, the definition of the word fruitarian is a person who eats mostly fruits, but also eats seeds and nuts. Also, a great many... Uh, fruitarians around the world consume greens, believing that they have some beneficial minerals that the body needs. Uh, do you think or do you agree with the definition that Wikipedia gives? Uh, Wikipedia is kind of the first thing that comes up on Google when you search for the definition of the word 
fruitarian or fruitarianism? Do you agree with this definition? If not, why not? Uh, I believe that this definition is, shall we say, incomplete. It is incomplete. It will surely be refined over time. So for me, uh, fruitarianism is eating only fruits. Greens, nuts and seeds are not included. That is closer to raw diet. That food is quite heavy. And there are many, many other nuances, differences, even the same protective substances that are contained in the seed which prevent digestion in the gastrointestinal tract. That is, if a person will make a practical experiment and compare what it is to eat purely fruits, how his gastrointestinal tract works, how he feels, and then eat seeds for some time, add them to his diet or greens, he will feel the difference and realize that it is really there. So for me, fruitarianism is eating specifically fruit. It is something that grows, roughly speaking, on a branch, on a tree, above the surface of the ground. It contains the pulp, the rind, and the stone or the seed. The pulp is for you, the seed for the tree. And such a cycle, the constant cycle of fruit in nature is fruitarianism. I haven't found anything more logical in nutrition yet. That I think is the best definition. A lot of people consider this lifestyle to be extreme. Do you agree with that, that eating only fruit is extreme? Well, if you look around and analyze, roughly speaking, what happens to people who eat even traditionally, what happens to them after 30 years, how often they let doctors in, how many times a year they get sick, and so on and so forth, chronic illnesses, allergies, endless different nuances. If you had all this and you start eating, roughly speaking, fruits, and you have all this disappear from your life, going to the hospital, any illnesses, Absolutely, it's just impossible. That is, any amount of cold, even if 200 people cough near you, you don't care absolutely. Your immunity becomes bulletproof. You just see in practice what is really human food and how much better your immunity becomes without any supplements, without any injections, pills, unpleasant or pleasant clever doctors who try to sell you something. For me, the answer is obvious. I'm a practitioner. I'm a person who tried it. It worked, and I'm telling you about it. That's the way it is. I agree. Part of fruitarians, almost all fruitarians I know, they emphasize their freedom, including they are free from other people's opinions. They do what they want. However, you as a fruitarian are a strong advocate of discipline and use it as a tool to help you grow. Is discipline really that important in your opinion? Or as many believe, is it better to go with the flow, enjoy yourself, and do exactly what you want to do? And in the context of this question, what is true freedom for you? Discipline. I would replace that with the word self-organization. I've seen people, including major bloggers and so on, who live by this kind of, uh, shall we say, principle to do only what they like and so on. The question is that in order to really do what you like, you must first have some kind of order in your head. Roughly speaking, it is the same as saying, eat what you want. And a person will, for example, eat all day, I don't know, ice cream or pizza, and everybody will say that it's going to cause some kind of harm. It's going to be ineffective. It's the same thing in action. First, you have to change to put everything in its place to really understand what is important to you. And then, having already prioritized, you can freely choose from the options that you have given yourself to do what you want. That is, initially a person has such garbage in his head, plus we are constantly distracted by something, some external factors, advertising, quite active, aggressive everywhere. A person often does not understand 100% what is his thoughts and what is not. So this self-discipline or self-organization allows you to get rid of all the unnecessary garbage to understand what you really want and to feel really free. So I can control my time, I can control my day, I can control my desires, and I make my own day, and I wouldn't say it's boring, it's not so fast and fun that it flies by for me that I don't know. There are people who wake up, roughly speaking, closer to lunchtime, no idea what they are even going to do today, where they are going to go, no motivation, 
no firm belief in their actions, determination, understanding for what, why, and how. I mean, I've seen these people, I've seen enough, I've seen people who talk about it on a professional level, and believe me, it's pretty pathetic. I mean, I've seen behind the scenes, so I'm sure my life is many times more fun, and a certain amount of self-organization in anyone's life has a place, and it's necessary. Some kind of framework that you put yourself in. On the contrary, you prioritize, clear out all the junk, and do all the fun stuff. Replacing meditation with self-organization. By the way, do you meditate? I, you know, at one time, and maybe even now, there was a very popular book called Shantaram. Shantaram, it's a gigantic book. I think it's overly detailed, but I read it because I wanted to familiarize myself with it. It was everywhere, on all the lists, rankings, topped them often. The book, to put it simply, is about a man who moved to India because of legal problems, and there he started a completely new life, literally from scratch. So he went to prison, he was framed in India, and when he got out, he had mental problems, physical problems, roughly speaking, and so on. He started training, workout training with this Indian guy, and the Indian told him that he didn't do any additional practices, that he considered workout training as the most ideal form of meditation because a human being, in fact, can concentrate or reproduce only one thought in one unit of time. We don't get tired because we think a lot. We get tired because the thoughts change very quickly in our mind. And he explained that when you do the exercise, you concentrate on the breath and the action. So, in that way, it is the purest, most perfect meditation. You stop your thought process, you focus it on a certain action, and over time, you can apply that to life just as needed in absolutely any setting. So I'm not sitting there with a pensive look, looking somewhere out there, not doing various forms of suffering and so on. Nothing so cryptic. I've just learned to focus in absolutely any situation to stop the train of thought and choose the right thought. It goes something like this. Training physically has allowed me to, shall we say, pump up the mental aspect. Then are there any other practices that you use, or is it training, fruit eating, and work? Fruit nutrition training, self-organization, prioritization, trying to remove the unnecessary things from your life, you focus on what's important. That's it. Every day. And by the way, why is it so important to you every day? You have on your Instagram account, on your YouTube short, on TikTok, everywhere. Every day you list how many days you've been on fruit. Yeah, the Track report. Keeping. Why is it so important for you to write this number every day? It's now 830 something days, if I'm not mistaken, you've been on fruit. There's a lot of it in there already. I need to look in my journal today. Every day I go. I'm going in to my, look at it. Wait, wait, wait. Tell me exactly. I remember, I think it was the 716th day without every water, day. I think. 600, no, 800, 826 day, you eat only fruit. 714 days you don't drink water. Today is January 12th. Okay, you've got 13. You haven't said anything Plus one, yet. Plus one, there. that's yes. 827 days. Why is it so important for you to track every day? To keep track of how many days you've been on. It's very simple. Very simple because it's, uh, first of all, it's, let's say, an experimental report. I've been very thorough in my approach to this process. I mean, if it started as an experience, then it became an experiment, and then it became a way of life. But people like, let's say, some kind of facts, some kind of proof, they like precision. I like precision too. And that's why when I started eating fruit, I started keeping a diary, where I wrote down everything that happened to my body in detail, how the training went, how much I slept, any changes in my body, weaknesses or positive moments, everything that happens. You watched my seminar, Fruit and Body, so basically, you know, yes, there is very interesting information in my diary, and on a daily basis, I kept a diary. I wrote down what was happening, a report, what day it was, and so on. And I still do it to have, let's say, practical information. And in addition, many people, they come in, they look and see that it is possible, that it is possible how long a person has been in this lifestyle, what happens to him, how he looks, how he talks, to see that there has not happened there, I don't know, some brain desiccation that is still as adequate.
I haven't drunk water for practically two years now. I mean, today, it turns out to be day 715, four more days. I will, of course, be written that there are 365 days in a year, in this, in a year, or 366 days, but it makes absolutely no difference because I count simply by months. 30 days is a month for me, so 720 days, two years, in four days it will be already, as I don't drink water, all the liquid from the fruit. Just eat the fruit, I mean, I don't need to carry any cans, bottles, like even in the gym these jocks do all the time, athletes. All you have to do is just, I don't know, put fruit in your backpack and you're completely free. It's the same in the gym, the same in the bath, it doesn't dry me out at all. In general, the feeling of unhealthy thirst that people have is due to the fact that when they immerse their body in heat-treated food, it starts to pull fluid, intracellular fluid, out of their body. Roughly speaking, you cook buckwheat, you pour it into a pot, the buckwheat absorbs the water, but it's still pretty dry. Then this buckwheat gets into your body and starts to pull the same water out of your body as it did from the pot, out of you. And your body signals you with this painful, terrible feeling of thirst when everything dries up that you urgently need to drink water. I'm not thirsty at all. It's not normal at all. If I'm hungry, I'm thirsty at the same time. Take a few bites of an apple and you're fine. So I can go as many times as I want to the sauna and then go straight afterwards to work out. Then I can go straight to the beach. And I will absolutely not be thirsty because I'm not drying myself out from the inside out like the average people who think they know everything about nutrition do. I'm filling myself up. Absolutely any fruit fills you up. So the feeling of thirst is an agonizing one that you can't block out just psychologically because you've told yourself that water is bad for you. Fluoridation, inorganic impurities, and so many different substances that are in water. That's one issue. That's if you go deeper. But in terms of this agonizing state of thirst in general, I mean, it cannot be blocked simply by willpower. It's much stronger. I completely got rid of this agonizing feeling. Completely. That's it. I'm going to assume that a lot of people who watch you or see you for the first time on social media or hear about you somewhere, hear sometimes through me, I know, and they text me that they don't believe you. Well, they don't believe that you're 100% eat only fruit and 100% not drinking water. And now in America, there is such a very, very hot, super hot topic in the community of fruit eaters, raw eaters, fruit eaters, that to pump up your body like you do to keep athletic shape, you need some additional, let's say, doping, right? Do you think that eating only fruits and training and disciplines is enough or as it has become popular now among fruitarians? That a lot of them take steroids to keep fit so they're kind of eating clean, working out, but they're also supplementing with steroids to keep athletic shape. Have you ever taken steroids or any such substances in your life? I'm going to assume that you certainly don't take them now. How often are you not believed and you have to prove yourself to people? We'll get into your interview show with Kirill Sarachev even further now. But how often do you personally have to prove to people even before that interview and before that show that you're not on steroids like others may be? Roughly speaking, that it's not hard work and discipline, but that it's an easy kind of path and so on. I think it's a normal reaction of absolutely anyone who is used to, let's say, to justify their infirmity, their weakness, lack of action and his brain tries to fire off some simple logical chain. That is, if he succeeds, it means that there is something shady going on. I mean, somehow it's all dishonest, 100%. It gives a man an inner sense of calm. It relaxes him, shall we say. It doesn't encourage action. It relaxes him. I mean, yes, he did this or that, but he did it dishonestly. That's it. I can live in peace. I mean, you know, right? Then there are people who come across the street, look and think, he did it, so it's possible. And then they start asking themselves, why can't I do it too? If there are so many advantages, if there are so many benefits, why don't I try? I mean, you know, people are divided into those who act and those who just justify themselves or justify their pity somehow. So to make a long story short, I can answer some of these questions about banned substances and so on. 
Roughly speaking, I played for the national team, trained as a member of the Olympic team. That is, I was involved in professional sports. We regularly passed all doping tests. Uh, in terms of tests of the recent ones that were on Sarichev's interview. So there you saw what the doctor said officially. They have very fancy equipment there. And he said, this man really doesn't consume any animal food, any substances and so on. It's been there for how long years we would have found something anyway, some markers and so on. Besides, there's no point in justifying yourself 100% like that to prove something to somebody. I started this experiment because I was personally interested. That is not for the sake of anyone, not to prove anything to anyone. My task was to find out what really is the kind of human food that, let's say, will allow man to have maximum health and improve his quality of life to the limit. Physical activity and nutrition, fruit nutrition. So it really works and it really works because for the third year it's working better and better. About the shape, they're already surprised. They're already wondering. They don't understand how you can eat so much fruit. Also remember that moment when I lost 30 kilograms of weight and then without increasing in absolutely any way, let's say the amount of food, the composition, no supplements, no protein there, I didn't count anything, completely freed myself from all this slavery, all this counting caloric intake. It works. All this dietology works if you eat traditionally if you're sick. So when you're eating fruit, it's total freedom. I'm only guided by hunger. I can basically not eat at all today if I want to. And nothing will happen to the mass. I don't need any protein carbohydrate windows to close. I don't need any carbohydrate loading and so on. I started this as an experiment. I asked myself the question, what is the species specific food of a person? Because everyone absolutely significantly on earth has some kind of species specific food. That is some habitat and species specific food but man does not have it. It is explained by the fact that man is an omnivore. But why is man such a sick omnivore? Why is he the only omnivore that is so pitifully sick all the time? So pitifully decrepit? Why such painful labor? I don't know. All absolutely things, even the most beautiful things in life, come with hellish agony. Everything in a person's life is through their backside, to put it bluntly. I don't know if you can translate it into English, but roughly speaking, everything's with crutches. How would that sound in English? I guess yes, crutches. Yes, it's crutches in English. Basically, it's all through some kind of crutch. I mean, I was confused by all those cheerful commercials on TV when they were telling us that there's such a thing as seasonal colds, that you should definitely get sick, that you should definitely take antibiotics, something else. I thought about why man is such a pathetic creature and how pathetic and worthless humans are as they sadly and miserably age and die. And man is the only creature that starts to, I don't know, sabotages themselves to look as worthless as possible. Now you understand what I'm talking about as much as possible. I won't emphasize it directly, but our recent training, I think it's a personal pain for you in a way. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, it makes me wonder why the man has everything going through one place. Even though he's an omnivorous, great, I don't know, a highly evolved being, something's definitely going wrong. Definitely. So I wondered what the species-specific food is for a creature like man, and I found the answer. So my practice demonstrates that you don't need to count calories. You don't need a certain amount of protein per day. You can absolutely not suffer from any disease. Allergies don't exist. There are no seasonal colds. Many, many, many more imposed traditional template things in the world simply do not exist if you do not clutter your avatar, your shell, that's all. Kirill Sarichev called you on his show because he also did not believe when he found out about you that you do not take any steroids but only eat fruit. Then it was, I think, half a year ago, almost a year ago when that show was filmed, you realized that you were going, well, as we say in English, to the shark den, tank, right? that is, you just go to the den of a bear, which will just eat you there. To get new audience reach and more subscribers to their account, and during the show with you, they were advertising energy drinks, all these chemically flavored drinks that they usually advertise in their show using you. How did you feel when you went on that show, realizing what was probably going to happen there? 
or maybe not realizing what your impressions were. And let's just say, for the viewers, we're just going to tell you that Artyom was invited on a Russian show. The athlete Kirill Sarachev invited him on a show where he took blood for the latest tests. For, there's just everything you can, everything you can think of, absolutely. The labs are complete. Only it's to try to prove that Artyom was eating something other than fruit, some medications, some steroids, maybe something in the past. They used the latest American equipment and they were interested to find something, but they found nothing. They gave Artyom a blank paper that Artyom was clean and also because of some indicators such as all kinds of hormones. The beloved legendary B12 cholesterol, which are down at zero, zero. and B12, Favorite, huh? which are down at zero, and also all the testosterone and other male hormone levels were so low that the doctor didn't want to let him out of his office without all sorts of shots and supplements, but they were able to prove, and Artyom has I think documented proof that yes, Artyom is indeed most likely eating only fruit, otherwise he wouldn't have those vitals, and he had absolutely no steroids found in his body. So tell me about your impressions of the show, what was left out. Of course, the show was cut, edited. We will also edit our interview, but hopefully not the way Kirill and company edited it. And as you watch that show, and with all these energy drinks commercials there, all sorts of energy drinks, what was your impression in general? Of the positives, he did find certain indicators that are at a high level, that are responsible for nails and hair and so on. I mean, he said they're amazing. And as if for that, some, I don't know, unfortunate women have to constantly take some vitamins, do some procedures, for me, it's all natural because I'm kind of eating what's making it better and restoring it. He also told me that I have a heightened genius gene. Do you remember that? You've been revising, you've been preparing, and here I am. That's a good thing too. I mean, yes, he said yes, that, yes. roughly speaking, IQ and everything else is elevated because of this hormone. So it's a nice moment kind of on the plus side. As for the general mood in general, did I, roughly speaking, realize that I was going into such, you know, a den where a person will still provide information more from his point of view, where all the unfavorable points will be trimmed by the doctor and everything else. Of course, I understood that. I even planned initially to do parallel filming. Then I thought, who cares, basically? What difference does it make? It's not necessary. Because, you know, the point is that there is a certain audience that is initially already negatively charged. And there is an audience that is doubtful or interested, or even people who have had experience in the past. Here they see someone who practices this on a regular basis. And there you go, all the links, uh, roughly speaking, all the information. Here's a personal example. So they doubted, and then they, you know, they subscribe to me, they add to me, they start communicating with me, they send some certain requests, questions, inquiries, and so on. And from the doubting contingent, they roughly speaking, change their point of view. Let's say that you come into someone else's territory and take a part of the audience for yourself. The part of the audience that just didn't know the alternative point of view. In a way, I was the one who was on the hunt. I was on the hunt and I treated it like, you know, come and take a trophy in someone else's territory. So I absolutely don't feel aggrieved here. I knew that he was going to be advertising energy drinks, that he was going to talk about something. What was behind the scenes? Well, for one, the doctor was drinking alcohol very heavily off screen. There was a lot of smoking by the guys behind the scenes. Right in the middle of filming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, right in the middle of filming, like, I don't know, like, I mean, what's the big deal? You know, guys smoking vapes and stuff like that. You know, it wasn't normal for me at all. When I saw it for the first time, I asked Kirill, I said, are you really going to smoke that stinking pacifier now? He was like, he almost choked. I said, I didn't expect that from you. I mean, you got the Russian hero image. A guy like that, like a gap here and there. Why are you sucking on that nipple? So a lot of the stuff that's behind the scenes, it's simple, but it's not about health. Plus, I'm not talking about the appearance of the doctor himself. You are, roughly speaking, a person who is involved with hormone therapy, male hormones, female hormones, and so on. You realize that Roughly speaking, this belly, these breasts, 
hanging down, which are male, that it is not normal, that you have some problems with hormones, and you're sitting there with a serious face telling me that I should take some substances. But seriously, man, go to the mirror and look at yourself. The man's hormones are out of balance. He's already obese, you know, even a non-specialist would say that at a glance, I don't know about the third stage of obesity, third, second degree. He already has visceral fat on internal organs. The person has specific health problems. The doctor has to go to the doctor and he sits there and tells a healthy person who has gotten rid of absolutely all diseases something. And he's getting drunk off camera and smoking and everything. You realize how ridiculous it is, how much of a circus it is. After that, I don't know, stand-up comedy show seems to be a serious show after what I saw. So I knew exactly where I was going, what was going on. I was calm, confident. The part of the audience that I wanted to wake up and roughly speaking take away, I took it away and woke it up. That's it. No surprises. I understand exactly what I'm doing, who I'm doing it with, when I'm doing it, and what I'm doing it for. That's it. Here's our show called Urban Fruitarian, and we're working on an Urban Fruitarian project. How important do you think socially when a person is transitioning to fruitarianism or is already a fruitarian, how important is it to be around in a community of people who are on the same type of diet? Or is it okay to be a fruitarian alone, socializing with people who are on a regular traditional diet? Maybe your husband or wife is also on the same type of diet, your children are on the traditional diet, and you are a fruitarian, or social life is very important. A human being is a social creature, and the environment you are in is very important, and it is very difficult to switch to such a diet if there is no one around you who is on such a lifestyle. You know, everything is important. Roughly speaking, your mindset makes a huge difference. I have, let's say, a contradictory attitude. Whatever is generally accepted in society, I will still analyze and think about. And the herd, as usual, well, classically, is always wrong. As you know, uh, Americans have a proverb or saying like one man army, right? One man in a field of war. It doesn't matter whether you're alone or not. You still have all the power. It's the same for me. I approach it from the point of view of a healthy cell strategy. So first you make yourself powerful, successful, and so on. Then you can share your energy and knowledge with other people in this way. So roughly speaking, will my friends eat the same way? No. Parents? Not parents. Uh, you basically already know my story. No one at first ate like that. I was laughed at, smiled at, asked tons of questions, you name it. Now absolutely everyone is following my lead. Absolutely everyone, you know? That's the power of personal example. That's the power of a person who does what they believe in and shows results. So it makes absolutely no difference to me, was and is now, whether my friends eat the same way or not. People start following me anyway. Absolutely everyone. I don't know if it's charisma or something else. But they just see the result and they start to follow me. When a man is lying there, miserable, snotty, with a fever, taking these pills. And roughly speaking, Artyom doesn't need it at all. He hasn't even been to any of these leprosariums, to any of these hospitals for years. I've already forgotten the way. I don't even know the road to the doctor's office. So, well, they're starting to wonder. He knows something. And they start repeating it. That's all. That's why my position from the beginning was, try it, it works, it's the truth. If it's the truth, it doesn't matter how many sheep bleat back at me that I'm wrong. You know what I mean? There's protein, B12, and all that other clucking. I'm totally uninterested. If it works, it works. So as far as other people are concerned, I think they should approach it from the same perspective. It's about your health. Yeah, there's advertising everywhere. Somewhere your day starts with coffee, there's a laptop. You're so successful. I mean, it's all already, you know, cliche images that are sewn into the subconscious. People are a victim of advertising, a victim of marketing, a victim of cliche thinking. Not everyone is able to think as freely as I do to free yourself from this stream of junk and garbage information that goes into people's heads. For this, you need to be a personality. For this, you need to develop and constantly search for information and constantly try and not just reason. So it doesn't matter how many kids you have. You have a lot of kids, by the way, and you see you eat fruit. And it doesn't matter if your parents, your friends are eating there. Initially, take care of yourself. Healthy cell strategy. Make yourself strong, healthy, energetic, take care of yourself, and then the environment will start to take you seriously. 
because it is one thing to reason and consult with everyone without showing the result, and another thing to show the result to show the way. There you don't even have to shut anyone's mouth. Everyone will be silent, and everyone will only ask questions. With respect, because they don't have that experience, but they would like to because you showed them how it can be. It's like this. We are leaders, and we probably have it easy precisely because we have leadership qualities. But people who maybe have less leadership qualities, do you think they can go to such lifestyle without socialization with people on this lifestyle? There's a lot of weak people, 100%. People are so weak, it's fantastic. I don't, I don't know, now. Can a person be strong yet not be a leader? And then he's, what, he begins this lifestyle through sheer willpower? I'll explain. Yes, let me explain. For example, there are people like that, like me, roughly speaking, yes, who went against the general opinion, the current, to do something. And then there are people who can't do it without support. In that case, you need support. Support in our modern digital world, it's not necessarily that some grandmother lives next to you, I don't know, and says, there, eat an apple and you'll do well. There, every day there, the best day of your life, no. Your support can be some kind of virtual environment, virtual communication. That is, people can go, for example, to mine or yours, to any live broadcasts, for example, of people with the topics they are interested in. It turns out, to be in this environment, to communicate, to go to the comments, again, there are a lot of people who are in a similar topic, in very different circumstances. In the North eating fruit, there are different truckers. Someone is starting a whole business, someone lives in the South. That is a variety of conditions and circumstances with children, without children. You can familiarize yourself with the experience of other people, to put it roughly speaking, in this atmosphere, in this environment, which discusses this topic to feel support and move on. So nobody prevents you, for example, from subscribing to me or you. Go to our social networks, get on live broadcasts, ask personal questions and so on and so forth. So please feel that support and move with us. Great. Let's go back to one of the most famous public figure. Steve Jobs was considered a fruitarian. Although, if you reread his biography, I've read it more than once, it says very clearly that in parallel with the fact that he was trying to eat raw food rather than fruit eating, they call it fruitarianism. He was using acid, he was using medications. Yes. And from that, I have a question. Now, a lot of fruit eaters, both in the former Soviet Union and here in America, I'm sure around the world as well, they are... They use substances, yes. They use mushrooms. Mushrooms have become very popular. Microdosing in small doses. They think it's raw food, it's raw product. You don't process it in any way. So you go pick it, eat it in microdoses, and fly away somewhere. But it helped Steve Jobs to get hooked on fruit eating. He even said that it was these substances, some substances that led him to fruitarianism. So how do you feel about all of this? Your opinion on microdosing and fruitarianism? Yeah, and Steve Jobs, I've read his biography too, and I can tell you it's, it's a pretty pathetic, shall we say, pathetic, shall we say, uh, attempts to say something in the direction of plant-based eating. Steve Jobs, in addition to being a substance user since childhood, also had problems with his adoptive parents because of it. If you remember why he eventually ran away from home to some Rastafarian sect, his father found marijuana or some kind of weed in his glove compartment, said, if I find it again, I mean, it's got to be dealt with somehow, it's going to be more serious. Just a warning for now. And his father found it again. Jobs did not wait for scandals and just left the house. As a result, he lived on some stupid farm where they are supposedly also friendly and cheerful Rastafarians, all taking care of each other. After a while, he realized they were just being exploited. Brainwashed young people are just exploited. They just work for free on this farm. Leaving this farm, he had a drinking problem. He had a drug problem. He had various completely idiotic, inadequate starvation runs. His favorite was carrots. Remember, you probably read about that. Carrot juices. Carrots Carrot juice. are, yeah, 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 in yeah. fact, a root vegetable in general, as if they don't That's belong to the fruit. I mean, already, and lots and lots and lots and lots of weirdness in general, is Jobs himself. You'll recall how intense he is, an impulsive person, 
all of his childish tantrums in meetings. He was, of course, creative 100%. And right now, for example, we're recording interviews on an iPhone. But the trick is that this was a bit of a sick psychological man. You remember him throwing tantrums. I mean, tantrums to the point where you had to sedate him with pills. He'd just start crying because the designers made the wrong bar on the menu, the wrong color or the wrong angle of some rounding, not enough percentages, not the way he had drawn it in his head. So it wasn't exactly a psychologically healthy person. But creative, like a lot of people, somehow they connect with the cosmos better at certain moments. In all other respects, they can be just sick, inadequate children. That is why Jobs' biography shows that there are a lot of weak, unprocessed places in a person. And in the topic of nutrition, he was very weak. How do you even combine firewood, drug use, everything else, root vegetables, and how can you call it nutrition with fruits if it is not fruits from the beginning? So I think this is a pathetic effort by the opponents of healthy living of this plant-based diet. Somehow to pull the blanket, somehow to make them look bad. Because they don't try it. They don't try it. They sit around and talk about it in the comments. Like I told you, there are people who act and there are those who sit around whining and just looking for reasons for their inaction. It makes them feel better about their lives. That's all. It's about the mushrooms, isn't it? Yes, 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 I yes, about that... mushrooms and what so many popular fruit-eating bloggers are now yeah. adding mm. to their diet. I believe that if you want to understand something about reality, you need to be in that reality. But most people are not in reality. They are disconnected from reality all the time. I mean, it's either some kind of social media, it's just a person. If they record themselves from the outside, it's some inadequate torso that sits there, for example, and swipes TikTok all day long. It just doesn't make sense. What are you even doing? You fall out of reality all the time. Uh, soap operas, alcohol on holidays, weekends, I mean, overeating sweets, something else. You're constantly trying to escape from reality and the attempt to escape from reality with the help of microdosing, some mushrooms, pills, acids. It's the same attempt to escape from reality. You want to understand something, you want to get pumped up about something, you need to be there and you need to do it. I mean, you want to understand more information about life, live it. People are constantly flying away from reality somewhere to alternate other worlds and trying to supposedly learn something that way. It's a weak person's position. So I have a negative attitude to this microdosing. With a sneer, I feel sorry for these people. They're weak, that's all. Tell me, from media celebrities, stars, Forbes billionaires, who would you like to meet in person? Who would you like to meet and talk to? And about what? To be honest, I have absolutely no idols. Absolutely. Then, who you'd like to... Let's rephrase the question. Who would you like to discuss the topic of fruitarianism with? But someone in the media, either a celebrity or a Forbes billionaire or a politician. I think Elon Musk could understand something because he's quite an advanced person. But in general, I don't know who I wanted to go with. I haven't had any idols for a very long time. I just stopped absolutely perceiving any other person as the ultimate some kind of instance or some kind of example. Absolutely. Everyone has weaknesses. I can see through them. Absolutely everyone. You watch some interview, you see this one has problems in his family. Yeah. This one has a problem there. This one has a problem here. This one has to, I don't know, drink alcohol in the evenings to relax a little bit, you know, relax again, take off. People don't like their life. Actually, reality does not satisfy them in any way. They're incomplete. No matter how many millions they have, they haven't found harmony in themselves. That's why I just don't have idols. I take something from one person, from another, from a third. But a full-fledged person as a person, who I would say is the perfect role model for me. That just doesn't exist. Everybody has flaws. I can see right through them. Especially when you start to study a person, watch his interviews, watch how he communicates, when he talks about himself, about his childhood. You can see through it all. For, for me personally, I don't know, maybe because I've read so many books on psychology and everything else, I can read any person. In terms of personality, I could talk to and say that, you know, there's fetal nutrition out there, it's so-and-so is adequate and so-and-so is going to save the planet in the long run. I don't know. I mean, I think I could have a conversation with, for example, Elon Musk, well, I think. That's same it. here. That's it. That's the end of it.
It's such a rhetorical question, I think you could answer it in one word, but I'll say it all later. Maybe leave it, maybe cut it down. We live in 2023. Technology is very well developed, but people's life expectancy is not increasing. People are suffering, dying from diseases, mostly heart problems and cancer. What does that yes. have to do with... And how can we very simple... Very simple. People say something about their development, some of it and so on. Technologically advanced for how many years? Yes, what not. But still people look miserable, sick. Go to the beach and see how many of these sick bodies are falling apart. Again, I am a coach. I face so many people. They tell me about their problems. Well, absolutely not one person I've ever met who is healthy. And I'll tell you more. There are fewer and fewer mentally healthy people. Absolutely everyone needs some way to level out stress, depression. If you look at successful people, they have to go to a psychologist. I mean, not only has the person not just gotten not just gotten less sick, he's gotten more sick. It's very strange. Medicine is evolving. They develop new drugs, new medicines. Every year you see there are some new cold pill to strengthen the immune system. All new vitamins, which absorption is no longer 50%, but almost 99 and 9 with microformula. And people are looking worse and worse and getting sicker and sicker. I mean, I don't know if I'm the only one that's so smart or if really nobody else can build a logical chain and analyze it, you know, right? I mean, a little bit of intelligence, that's all. A little intelligence, at least people, still everybody keeps drinking, still everybody believes that a little poison is good for a little bit of everything, and so on. You see, so pathetic are the excuses, so weak are people's analytical systems. It's as if all around, they are not even single core computers, they are just calculators. You know, a person is good in every field. He can do this or that. Or, for example, he's a good cab driver. But in other spheres, people don't think at all. He comes home, I don't know, turns on the TV and turns off his brain. And there are different spheres. People distinguish business sphere, money, health, relationships, and so on. Why not look at all these spheres separately and find any weak spots and try to pull up this sphere? That's it. So for me, there is absolutely no authority in anybody. Well, no, a person who has harmoniously developed, balanced all spheres. There is no harmony in people. When a person with harmony appears, I will say that this is a cool role model. So far, I don't know such people. How do you see the world in 10 to 15 years? How do you see fruit eating in 10 to 15 years? And what role will you play in it? The most pivotal role I'm going to play in that. I see this topic evolving. I see it gaining more and more relevance because even my audience is constantly growing. I see these wonderful, successful people. They exist. That is not to say that you should not be disappointed in people. They are there. It's just that they often have no alternative choice. We've been taught since childhood. You have to have a hot meal at lunch. You have to have this. You have to have that. You have to have everything. The day, starting with porridge, people are brainwashed. He just doesn't know any other alternative. I've been through all those cliches too. I've been through this and everything. You can't eat fruit on an empty stomach and so on and so forth. When a person has an alternative, plus a person has some curiosity or intelligence, he starts to study information and he will definitely, definitely, let's say, get on the right road, on the right rails. And there must be people there who will show, by personal example, already at a distance, that it all works. I will be one of such people. That is why I can see how all this is acquiring, let's say, how it is developing, how the topic is developing. Secondly, as I said, the theme of environmentalism, of treating animals ethically, the planet ethically, it's gaining momentum too. People are starting to get smart. They are realizing that, roughly speaking, shitting in the well that you drink from, or there, I don't know, well, there are a lot of such yes phrases. It's a bit unmanly. That is, you need to take a little bit of responsibility and realize that what you do today is bad, tomorrow it will come back to you. And this is not a metaphor. This is just a fact. Pollute the environment somehow. Pollute water spaces, disturb some exchanges in nature which, well, should be there, and you completely violate them somehow. You will get feedback from the world. You will. It's happening. You can see it in the state of health. You can see it in life expectancy. You can see it in a lot of things. People manage to complain about it. Although this is also a normal phenomenon, people complain. Although they say, I want to live like in Switzerland or Japan, 
I want it to be as clean as possible everywhere, even in Russia. I've had this happen to me many times. I approached people without negativity. I just asked why. For example, we're standing at a stoplight and man is smoking in front of me. There are women standing there, children standing there. He's standing there taking a drag. Then he takes this cigarette and just throws it on the road. Right on the roadway in the middle of town, I just slap him on the shoulder like this. He turns around. I say, why'd you do that? No negativity. It's clear that I'm a two meter tall guy. So you're hovering, standing behind me. Somebody could get lost. But no, I'm being kind. I said, why did you do it? I'm just curious. He's like this, and I don't know. And you can imagine a man walks by and picks up a cigarette. He picks up a cigarette and throws it away. So if you want to make the world a better place, start with yourself. Start with yourself, start watching your actions. That's why I see things evolving. Everything is evolving. That there are fewer and fewer stupid and unaware people. That this, shall we say, the game, it's getting better, 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 better. People are thinking about nutrition and the planet more and more every year. And it's becoming a trend. Among other things, you can understand this. If you look at how many shares, for example, ecological companies, ecological developments, guys like Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, and other people from the list of the top, 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 and so on are buying up the richest. There's a lot of investment going on in the environment, and it's just becoming a trend. If you don't feel it now, time will show you. That's all. This is how I think everything is going to be very wonderful. All the inadequacies, everything that is happening in the world right now, it is all so unnatural, stupid, 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 blind, unnatural. I won't touch on politics and everything else right now. We already know what we're talking about. I'll just say that people will wise up 100%. I hope so. And if they don't, who cares? We're going to live in this world anyway. It'll be more fun. It's more fun this way and it's more fun that way. Pick your path and just play. It's a game. That's how it is. Thank you, Artyom. I got three short answer questions. I've been collecting them all from my followers or yours who have started to follow me too, but also from mine who are native English speakers, but who see all my reposts of you, which I do quite often, and that's how they found out about you. But they're very confused that they don't understand your daily stories reels, by the way. But we had already fixed that and the Urban Fruitarian Project and MFT 21 and so on, so it won't be a problem. Does your family support your lifestyle? Do they eat like you do? Yes, now. I mean, obviously not at first, but now, yes. Do you sweat? Are you yeah, sweating that's... or are you sweating? Well, you don't drink water. Anything about eye lubrication, joint lubrication, thermal regulation when you're exercising or when you're in the heat, the condition when your body cools down and sweat is released, everything is absolutely in perfect condition. Yeah, it's natural. Do you grow any fruit yourself? Someday, maybe I'll do it on an industrial scale. I'll buy a plot, have people there and so on. But it's not something that I have to go and water something, clean pots. There are people who do it better than me at this stage. My job is a little bit different. I promote this information. I deal with the bodies of people. I do my coaching. Someday in the distance, when the financial component allows, I have such plan. Do you think all people should be fruitarians or is it just for a select few? I think at a distance, it's for those who want the most, the best quality of life. One of the revelations for me was that it turns out not everyone wants to be healthy. I was kind of surprised. Some are willing to sell their years of life and their health and their quality of life for flavors. It's like with drugs. You can't get enough sensations in the real world. You pay with your life, your health, for the sake of flying off to some trips and getting enough emotions there. There will probably still be people like that. Who knows? But it would be nice if everyone would wise up already. Do you have any health problems that you still hope to fix with your lifestyle? No. Everything's perfect. And it's getting better and better every day. I'm constantly noticing things. My condition diary, I'm constantly making new notes, improvements for the next, including seminars, courses. I already have something to tell people. Are you taking any multivitamins, supplements, etc.? Absolutely not. 
When you buy fruit, do you make sure it's organic or organic, biodynamic, or you don't really care? I try to find the best, uh, as best as I can in principle in the environment I'm in. I try things, I analyze, I look at the seller sometimes too. Again, not every person, sometimes you just want someone pleasant to work with. Do you feel kind of like, feel the world, feel the fruit itself, how high quality is it? You learn to pick and choose the best. Is the earth round or flat? Who knows? Someday we'll find out maybe. Right now there are other problems to solve. We'll see. How many hours a day do you sleep roughly now? On average about six hours. That is, I wake up regularly at five or six in the morning, do all my work, do all my exercises, sort out my mail, plan my day somehow and so on. I mean, I'm constantly socializing with people. Roughly speaking, in a way, if you're a coach, you're a babysitter, except my kids are adults and they have things going on all the time. This one has a meeting, this one has a business meeting, this one's in another country today, and you have to think of something, react somehow. So I wake up my kids, look at the messages, make some corrections, time suggestions, some adjustments, and you move on, just like that, every day like this. How much sun do you, well, how much per day do you spend time in the sun? Now, being in Thailand, I think it's more than if you were in Saransk. Do you use any kind of sunscreen? Do you think sunscreens are necessary? What is the best way to protect your skin from sunburn? Absolutely no creams, sunglasses, and so on. In general, a person on a fruit-based diet is not capable of getting burned. I've already done experiments. Your skin and many, many pigments function differently. You just can't get burned. So I spend as much time in the sun as I'm able to spend. There's an opportunity. I go to the beach, swim, sunbathe, etc. What's your most common response when you're told, well, in moderation, everything is good for you? But it's, you know, there's a saying like that. Basically, you can translate it into English. If you have to try everything in life, start with your own excrement. It's a counterbalance to these young people who say, live fast, try everything. We only live once. But if you have to try everything, start with your own excrement, then literally try everything. I had a brutal injury, so tough in fact, that every reputable doctor I consulted stated with complete 100% seriousness that I would never walk again in my life. At best, it's straight bingo. I'm a lucky ticket to draw if I can walk with a cane, with a stick, at some point in my life. I got really pissed off at the whole attitude of modern medicine. I realized how pathetic and helpless they are. So I just stayed up one night, thought hard, broke the cast, took it off, removed the cast, and started to develop my leg myself. I invented a system of exercises for myself. After a while, I was able to walk. Next, I began to study the topic of nutrition, how important it is and how much it affects inflammatory processes in the body, the recovery of the body, and metabolic processes. I realized that nothing in this life is more important than nutrition. Yeah, I believe that the shortest way to a goal, to any goal, is the straight path. I don't like, you know, to go down some obscure paths and so on. I mean, I thought, okay, human nutrition is fruit, right? Okay, let's do it. So that's how I eat. I start keeping a food diary. I start analyzing everything. I start buying fruit. I start to check everything, roughly speaking, to see if it works if it doesn't work. So the most direct way to the goal, the easiest way, is the direct way. The fastest. I like to take the straight path. I don't like to go these zigzags. So yeah, I'm one of those people who conquered all food addictions just right off the bat. Because that's the way my brain works. I set a goal and I achieve it. What else is there to tell? Yeah, there was a very rigorous detox process. It's when your body is completely renewed. It's like, I don't know, completely ripping down your house and rebuilding it. It's when all your organs start to work completely differently than they used to. This stage often breaks people down. They become afraid. They lose weight. There can be hair loss. A lot of things happen and happened, including to me. I described all this in my seminar called Fruit and the Body. It has such shocking, motivational, powerful information that when people watch it, they just write to me. Artyom, this is the best thing I have ever seen in my life. Thank you so much. I'm glad I was able to bring this information and energy to people. What else? Basically something like that. It's like this. That is a certain self-organization, a certain champion mentality. And that's it. 
and you just act and take your own. That's it. Now I can walk without a cane. Remember what they promised me, the doctors? I can do anything now. Everything. And my musculoskeletal apparatus, it's like a young man's. Even before the Olympic team, before I started all these hellish loads, fighting with these giant men, chopping, breaking ribs, fingers, ears, and everything else. I mean, my body has recovered. I feel light, wonderful, delightful. I feel healthy. And every day, I feel better and better. Until people feel that lightness in their bodies, they're just gonna keep eating the traditional way. Drink on the weekends, counting the calories, chicken, rice, and so on. They don't realize there's an alternative. It's scary to try it. That's why people like me, leaders, they are needed, and they will be in the maximum trend in due time. I'm telling you, the topic of nutrition is going to be like the new rap. It's going to be the hottest thing on the planet. Have you ever used your body? Well, so beautiful, pumped up, and attractive enough to make some money on it? Do you use it now in any way? If it can be taken as a personal example, when, for example, you film your workouts, people see how your muscles work, how you can look trim, and so on. If you use this as motivation, then of course it is in a sense my product, my creation, and it should be used. That is, if you constantly go everywhere closed, hide and only talk about it, then something is wrong with you. It's like a cobbler without boots. You talk about something, talk about athleticism, show the result, that's it. The question is immediately removed. Visually, when we see something, we perceive information and memorize it. As they say, it is better to see once than to hear a hundred times. Therefore, when a person can both hear and see everything, just bam, something shifts in his head. New neural connections are formed, information is received, it is fixed there. Because here, there's a prime example right here. I thank you again. I don't know which one we'll keep, but it was great. We'll definitely do it again sometime, but I think that's enough for the first time. We will have all the links in the description, in the profile, to all your social medias and hopefully we can finalize them in English so that you can already broadcast to a global worldwide audience. But we will probably also keep this interview in Russian for Russian audience who want it in your native language. That's why I asked all the questions in Russian. We'll translate them. I'm going to record them in English now and I'll let you go because I'm sure you have a very busy day ahead of you. I hope you enjoyed our interview. As always, Wonderful talking with you, Ina, as always.